Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here. Welcome back to Tesla Daily. Been a pretty quick break since we did have that FSD beta video over the weekend, so check that out if you did miss it. But today we are talking about updates on Giga Shanghai and Giga Berlin. We've also got news on casting on Tesla AI. There were a couple of fires for Tesla vehicles over this weekend. Then we've got a fun supercharger update and a couple other items as well. All right, quick look at the markets. Tesla today starting off the week on a relatively strong foot, although it could have been stronger considering the NASDAQ finished up 1.6%. Tesla just barely above that, almost 1.7%, closing at $674.90. There are a few things from a broader economic standpoint to keep an eye on this week. A couple of Fed-related items. First, tomorrow, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell will be speaking. That's about three hours after market open. And then on Wednesday, two hours before market close, the FOMC meeting minutes from the early May meeting will be published. I don't really know what else we have to learn. I think the committee has been very open, and we've heard from Fed Chairman Jerome Powell a few times since that meeting, so... Shouldn't really be all that significant, but sometimes tends to be anyway. And then on Thursday, we get updated figures for the first quarter GDP estimate. Remember, there's a final estimate, but there are two advanced estimates before that. So we already had the first advance. This is the second estimate. So it'll be interesting to see if there's been much of a revision there. All right, getting into the Tesla news, I want to start off with Giga Shanghai. We've got a few pretty interesting updates here. Remember last week we had heard that Tesla may have been targeting today, May 23rd, to start a second shift of sorts, if not by reopening, then by expanding their closed loop setup with the target of increasing daily output to about 2,600 vehicles per day, which would be actually a little bit above the pre-lockdown levels. So this morning, we got a status update on this from Reuters. They are reporting that according to an internal memo that they have seen, Tesla is now targeting Tuesday for this expansion. So just one day later, and they again report that the target is 2,600 vehicles per day. They also note that according to the memo, Shanghai produced about 1,000 vehicles on Monday. They also added that the memo said that this would bring Tesla's weekly output to nearly 16,000 units, which would suggest that the daily production rate of 2,600 vehicles would only be for a six day per week schedule. That would map out to 15,600 per week versus 2,600 every single day for seven days would be 18,000. So that should probably be kept in mind for any forecasting that we're doing for June. So that is a Reuters report. What I have heard is that this Tuesday date would be highly unlikely because not all workers at Giga Shanghai have been informed of this yet. I suppose that's not necessarily a prerequisite, but you would think that if this were happening in just a few hours, which it's already Tuesday in Shanghai as I'm recording, you would think that the workforce would be more broadly aware of this if this were something that were happening today. That said, Tesla is definitely quickly taking steps in this direction. They're preparing for more employees in the factory in this closed loop system. Apparently the number of workers in this closed loop system has been increasing as of Sunday. Tesla over the last few days has also been surveying employees that have not yet returned about their test status, so the dates of their last test and the results. So there is action here. Circumstances are changing, but there is going to be a little bit of lag time. Apparently, returning workers have to quarantine for three days. That would seem to make this Tuesday report even more unlikely. And it sounds like the rumored date is something more like May 26th. So I wouldn't be too surprised if we get another report on this from Reuters tomorrow morning, saying that there's a new updated date. To me, it seems like maybe there's just some miscommunication here where maybe the ramp up towards 2600 per day is going to start on Tuesday, but that's not really the target for that level of production. I don't know. That seems somewhat plausible. I think Tesla can ramp up pretty quickly, but it is still going to take some time. So we'll continue to monitor any updates on that throughout this week. Obviously, that's very important for the Q2 number and then very relevant to that as well. We also got an update this weekend from the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology in China. That so far, as of Friday, May 19th, Tesla has produced 26,000 vehicles at Giga Shanghai since reopening. So I think this is a little bit below what people may have hoped for thus far because we had previously had reports of production being about 1,300 per day, but this number suggests a little bit below 1,000 per day. It's 800 per day, but we did have a couple of days of missed production there, you may remember, due to supply constraints. So if we look at our production tracking spreadsheet here, just isolating in on Shanghai, and we kind of split up May into the two periods where we know May 1st through May 19th because of this report, it's about 15,000 vehicles added on to the almost 11,000 from April. That gets you to your 26,000 vehicles through May 19th. If we assume from the 20th through the 31st, then Tesla almost matches that. So some increase in production as they hopefully ramp up. And then if June is roughly at that almost 16,000 vehicles per week that we're seeing in this Reuters report, that would put Shanghai Q2 production at just below 108,000 vehicles. I do think there's a possibility that Tesla can beat that for June, but that would require a lot of things to go right. So I think given the reporting that we have, this is a reasonable estimate to look at for now. If we pull back in the numbers from Q1, that would leave a gap of about 70,000 vehicles in Q2 from Giga Shanghai versus Q1. That's a lot to make up from Fremont and the early ramps from Berlin and Texas. Maybe you can get 10 or 20,000 of that from Fremont, 
but I don't think Giga Berlin and Texas combined are going to be more than 20,000. So if Shanghai comes in around this level, obviously that's not a certainty, but if it does, I think best case you're looking at production falling about 30,000 vehicles short of Q1. That'd be 275,000 for Q2, and that's probably even a stretch. Again, if Shanghai is at this level, it wouldn't be unreasonable to expect a record from Fremont of 130,000. That'd be 5,000 above the first quarter. And then maybe you add 15 or 20,000 from Berlin and Texas. Hopefully it's more than that, but we haven't seen the evidence for that yet. That scenario would put you in the mid 250,000s. While that would be down 17% quarter over quarter, it would still be up 24% year over year. And Tesla can do some things with average selling prices here to help offset that drop in production by further prioritizing higher trim vehicles. So at this point, we do still have pretty high error bars, but just trying to walk through a couple of helpful scenarios there. One thing that we talked about last week that might boost these numbers a little bit is a second shift at Berlin. Tesmanian had reported on that on Friday. Drive Tesla Canada today reporting that Tesla is now adding that second shift today, Monday, May 23rd, according to a source familiar with the matter. So they don't seem to be sourcing from Tesmanian here, which although we can't know for sure, hopefully means we have two sources on this second shift at Giga Berlin happening sometime in the last few days. So anyway, still some pretty high error bars on Q2. I think for the most part, analysts in Wall Street will look past the actual Q2 results and be more interested in Tesla's comments on the call and specifically what their production rate is at the end of the quarter heading into Q3. Because of the oddity this quarter and because Tesla is likely to report a production and delivery number below Q1, they may include something in the production and delivery report about what that rate is in the final week or something like that. Just to give a little bit more context, especially in a market that right now could definitely change by then, but right now is looking for things to punish. I think any sort of forward-looking information or commentary that Tesla shares, that's going to be much more important than the results from a quarter that had all these impacts that people are extremely well aware of. All right, let's move on from that. We've got an update here from Idra. As we have previously talked about, Idra is having an open house event, which isn't really an open house event because I think it's invite only, but they're having a showcasing event of their newest Kika Press from June 6th through June 14th. So Idra, the last couple of days, has been hyping this up on LinkedIn. They shared out a photo of somebody standing next to a part of the 9,000 ton casting machine. It's obviously massive. They also shared out a little video today and both posts talking about how every day they're getting closer to the realization of the first 9,000 ton Giga Press. So like I talked about, we have talked about this pretty in depth before, a couple months back when they released their first hype video about this. One thing you may remember from that is that LK, which actually owns Idra Group, had already made a 9,000 ton casting machine. So it's a little bit murky on where the business and branding lines are drawn here, but Idra may be just getting a little bit clever with their wording and saying it's the first Idra Gigapress that's 9,000 tons. Either way, that's not all that important, just kind of interesting. What is more important is whether or not this actual casting machine is for Tesla or not, because Tesla had previously said that for the Cybertruck, they'd be using an 8,000 ton press. So I think a lot of people kind of assume this is for Tesla and assume it's for the Cybertruck, and neither of those is necessarily the case. I mean, it could definitely be for Tesla. It could even be for the Cybertruck, but it could also be for some other product that we don't necessarily have the details on yet. Anyway, I'm sure over the next few weeks, Idra will keep talking more about it, and then hopefully from that open house event, we'll hear a little bit more as well. All right, next we've got another item to add to the calendar for what is becoming a pretty event-heavy August. The annual Hot Chips Conference, which is a chip design and computing conference, will be taking place from August 21st through August 23rd, and Tesla is set to have a few speakers at this conference. All are on the final day, Tuesday, August 23rd, and we've got two on Dojo. So Dojo, the microarchitecture of Tesla's exascale computer, and Dojo, supercompute system scaling for machine learning training. And then Ganesh, who is Tesla's senior director of Autopilot Hardware, who you may remember from AI Day, he presented Dojo. He's doing a keynote at Hot Chips called Beyond Compute, Enabling AI Through System Integration. So even though we haven't heard quite as much about Dojo recently, Tesla's still obviously hard at work on that project. And the timing here is kind of interesting, maybe just a coincidence, but Tesla did schedule AI Day for just a couple of days before this event, or AI Day number two rather, that is set for August 19th. So should be a few interesting days there. All right, next up we've got news of a couple of Tesla fires happening over the weekend. Generally not something all that interesting to me. Tesla publishes their fire statistics and they're much less frequent than internal combustion engine vehicle fires. But when you have two happen within a couple of days, probably worth looking at just to make sure there's nothing there indicating maybe more widespread issues. So one of these was a Model Y in Canada and the driver claims that the power electronics failed. So the driver chose to kick out the driver's side window to get out of the vehicle. So public service announcement, all Tesla vehicles have manual door releases. It's a good idea to familiarize yourself with those. 
Anyway, the cause of this fire is not yet known, but local news is reporting that fire investigators are set to examine the vehicle tomorrow. So hopefully we'll see an update on that. And then the other fire was in California. This was a Model 3 that the owner says caught on fire in his driveway. Also, no clear report on what exactly caused this fire, but the local fire department did say that they were able to extinguish the fire quickly, so that may suggest that it's not a battery fire because generally those take a while, but I will keep an eye out for any more information that we get on either of these fires. All right, last couple of things here. First, we've got an update on a plan that Tesla has aspired to for a long time, and that is a diner-drive-in supercharging station combo, which Tesla appears to have now filed planning documents for. Looks like the location will be 7001 West Santa Monica Boulevard, which is in West Hollywood in LA. So the site would be two stories. It would have a restaurant. It would have a couple of screens that would apparently be visible from the charging locations, of which there would be 29 superchargers, five level two chargers as well. And apparently whatever content they're showing would be about a half an hour long. So I don't know if they'll just run some things on loop or how that'll work. And of course, with screens in the car, this isn't something that is necessary, but it is a fun novelty. So it'll be cool to see how that develops and what Tesla does with the restaurant portion too. All right, last item, this is coming from Electric. They've noticed that Tesla has filed a request for a rule change with the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT, to allow people with residential solar and battery storage to sell energy to the grid. Texas's grid is kind of its own beast and a lot of opportunities there for improvement. So it's nice to see Tesla at least being active in this space and hopefully their position in Texas gives them some influence on how these things are decided going forward. All right, that is it for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast and we'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, May 24th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.